Good evening, everyone, and uh, thank you for all attending our <clears throat> meeting. Uh, could we all please stand and do the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <laughs> Not a good thing to have. Okay. We've got a good crowd here tonight. Okay. Um, we're going to start with uh, letter C, the public comment period. I just ask that you state your name and address and. Uh, you're more than welcome to address the Board of Selectmen. Yes, Monica. Is it, it should be is green. It green. Just the thing that says There you go. Hold it like an ice cream. Building Study Committee, kind of a last word on the subject, I want to uh, publicly extend uh, our thanks to uh, everyone in town who voted in support of the uh, DPW project. Uh, this was the classic uh, team effort. I'd like to thank the Board of Selectmen, Finance Committee, DPW Commissioners for all speaking in the unison at town meeting on the, on the urgent need to address this uh, facility. And um, just uh, to remind all of us uh, 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 and thank everyone for the hard work along the way and all the different pieces that went into uh, the success uh, of this effort, the good information that we put up on the website that answered questions for people, the, um, the open uh, the forums, the public forums that we held that some of you attended, that again addressed uh, deep-seated concerns that people had had for many years and, and helped to bring them around. Uh, the open houses that the DPW commissioners held and the um, responding to questions on Facebook. I think we all learned you cannot uh, ignore social media these days. It's, it is so, so influential. Mm -hmm. and, and last but not least, the, the friends of the DPW who stood out there in some rather blustery and rainy conditions on some days to pass out information at really the, the center of Rockport, the DPW uh, transfer station or the dump, which really is, is the place to be for anything that you'd like to get done in town. So I really just wanted to uh, thank everyone um, for their help in this effort. It was close, but uh, I think it, it represents the, uh, the will of the town. And uh, now the real world, real work begins, Indeed. which we look forward to. So thank you. Th thank you, Monica, and thank you for your, all your hard work yep. and uh, persistence. Um, <clears throat> it was, uh, as you said, it was a team effort, and I think what really got me was the uh, uh, public, uh, I mean, excuse me, the, um, the safety of the building, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, when I would, there were a lot of people that were against it. Why do they need to have this type of uh, building and so forth? I said, well, someone's going to get hurt up there, and uh, it, w it was time, so... Uh, it passed by 108 votes, which is close, but uh, I think it, it was the right thing to do. And, and uh, again, whoever, everyone was involved, in which I think is great. So thank you, Monica. Uh, Toby? Toby Arsenian, 95 Granite Street. Uh, I believe you scheduled a workshop meeting to discuss the uh, sewer needs assessment on the 29th. Um, is that still on? Mr. Chairman, as of this afternoon, it is not on. There's some uh, discrepancies in, in some in information that needs to be clarified, so we'll be rescheduling. Okay. Thank you. C can you explain discrepancies information? At, at this moment, it would be uh, low key just to speculate, but it would be clarified a few things. Okay. I see. Well, I was at the planning board last Thursday, and nobody had told them that, that there was a meeting or, you know, that there wasn't a meeting. So when I went, you know, lathering on about it, you know, I got blank stares. 
uh, I would ask that when you do, are you going to reschedule it? Of course, yeah. Uh, that when you do, that you make the effort uh, to be sure that you can project uh, the sewer district, which is not a district, the delineation up on the screen, large scale, so that everyone would have a chance to know what we're talking about. And having read through the, the revi revision of the Kleinfelder report, uh, I can tell you that it is uh, you know, full of useful information, but starts from false assumptions, as the earlier report did. Uh, that is, it includes areas that are not uh, adjacent to streets with town sewers, includes other areas that was a decision, whether uh, political or otherwise, it, uh, a most unfortunate decision and not properly accounted for publicly. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Yes, ma'am. Yes, my name is uh, Patricia Pierce, 35 Broadway, and I've been appearing um, here before you for the last few months about the Seabrook reactor, and I'm here to report what I've learned uh, recent in the last two weeks. The, um, the boards of health are in charge of radiological emergencies, and we want to prevent a radiological emergency. The, the circumstance up there is actually very serious and far more than I had recognized. I would like to read you the letter that I've written recently because... Can you give us the letter and then we can pass it around. It might be quicker that I way. I turned it in a, last week. Okay. Oh, then we have it. Oh, you have it. Yes, okay. it's in our okay. packet. Yep. So no need to read the letter. But in, well, anyways, for, th for the continue. audience, if I may, this sure. it's a very critical issue. The... Uh, Actually, no one is, seems to be aware or alarmed about what's happening. The concrete is failing, and I have contacted the NRC and sent them a 24-page document, and this is the letter that I've written to the U.S. New NRC, um, the Atomic Safety and Licensing Board, concerning the Seabrook Nuclear Reactor ASR degradation of concrete. That's alkali silica reaction. It's a chemical reaction. Sir, I was unable to attend the open hearing on September 23rd and wish to submit the following testimony. The Seabrook re reactor has been operating since 1990. During that 30-year period, it discharged 40,000 curies each year, a total of 1.2 million curies. All of that radioactive matter passed through the concrete structure and remains active in the concrete, causing major disruption to cell structure by active cumulative emissions, 37 billion photons per second per gram of fuel. There's 100 tons of fuel in the reactor. There are 1,500 tons of used fuel on the site sitting in stored pools. The concrete is failing. It's been failing for 10 years. The hearing that was just held was to uh, decide whether what they've ordered testing of the concrete, but it's being none, done not with the reactor concrete, which is, has all this radiation in it. And the, the realization that I had, which I did not have before, is that, that for 30 years, the same concrete has been sitting there being radiated. It's overloaded. It began to fail 10 years ago. It's failing progressively. So this is, it could fail at any time. No one can predict when it would fail. And that's a meltdown. That's an out of control reactor. Okay. Um, the concrete has been, has had cumulative 1.2 million curies. These are astronomical figures. These are 10 to the 25 to the 30. It's not even conceivable. Add to this the rising sea coming in up under the reactor core. When I moved to Rockport in 1990, high tide at Old Garden Beach was 60 feet from the seawall. It's now 10 inches up the wall uh, during a storm and even at a moderate high tide. Seabrook reactor is visible from Halibut Point. It discharges into the 12 to 14 mile marsh by ocean gyres. The combination rising sea and salt water 
coming up under the reactor core and the radioactive saturation of the concrete cannot be simulated in a test environment. The failure is progressive. It has been observed since 2010. There is no predictable warning of failure. Any loss of coolant raises the core by thousands of degrees, which is out of control meltdown. I ask that you consider the irreparable consequences of failure of the structure by flood, tidal surge, storm gale winds. There is no repair, only progressive deterioration. Please close the reactor before the catastrophic event occurs. Please prevent the hazardous radiological emergency that cannot be contained or reversed. There is nothing to be gained by waiting for the concrete to fail, and there is no remedy. And so I, I feel that the, I appeared before the Gloucester Board of Health, and I'm appearing before the Rockport Board of Health. They have the legal authority, but you are the law. You're the, you're the um, home rule. And you're the only ones who can do anything, you and the board. And I suggest that you get the attorney general to go to a federal court and get an injunction to prevent a radiological emergency at Seabrook. Close the reactor. They're going to keep operating it until they can't, until they die doing it. I mean, they literally will not close it. Not the, the NRC is... Is, has a dual mandate to promote nuclear energy and safety. The two don't, don't mesh at all. So I hope you'll consider, I've, I've never been able to get on the agenda. At some point, if I'd like to be on the agenda to discuss what, what you could do. Okay, well, thank you very much. Is there anyone else for public comment? Okay, hearing none, let's move on. <clears throat> Interviews uh, for appointments. Is Evelyn here? Oh, come on up, please. This is for the Conservation Committee. Is there a uh, motion? Yes, there is. I move to nominate Evelyn Adante to the Conservation Commission for a term to expire on June 30th, 2022. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconding. Welcome. Oh, thank you. It's nice uh, to have you here. Do you have any questions? Or oh, oh, do we have questions? <laughs> this is going to be like a Senate uh, You might want to take a seat. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> You don't have to. No, yeah. If you'd like to sit, you can. No, that's all right. Okay. I don't buy like this week's Senate. Oh. <laughs> yeah, sure, that's a good point. Uh, does anyone have, oh, well, thank you, obviously, sure. for stepping forward, and we appreciate uh, everyone's, uh, so many people uh, uh, joining our committees and, and so forth. We would, as Sarah says numerous times, we wouldn't be able to run this town without all the volunteerism that we have. Uh, so thank you, uh, first of all. And you. Can you tell us a little bit sure. for, about your background so and so forth? So I'm at 40 Granite Street. I just moved here in March. Um, prior to that, I had been living in Boston for the last 30 years. Uh, my my uh, educational background is in geography and city and regional planning, mm. and I've spent most of my uh, career working for the Massachusetts Port Authority at Logan Airport, designing um, ground access systems, doing customer service, uh, surveying, understanding what where the air, air passengers are coming from and what they need, et cetera. And then I've also been an independent consultant for a number of years on uh, trans really transportation, spatial analysis, uh, market research. Uh, so I've worked in both the private and the public sector, but primarily the public sector. I don't have any direct experience with conservation other than... Well, thank you very much. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. No, no, I'm okay. Other than having been a project manager on, on certain um, uh, issues or, or projects where I had to deal with the regulations and I found out how... Um, uh, you know, all-encompassing they are, <laughs> to put it mildly. That's great. Okay. Well, thank you again. Thank you. Uh, okay. that's, that's awesome. Any, any, anyone else? Um, uh, well, I'll just say that with Dave, Fran, and Laura, um, and the rest of the committee, you have a great committee, and yes. they will, um, I'm sure they will do an excellent job kind of acclimating you and, and with Jerry as well, orienting you and 
pointing you in the direction of the reading material you need. I'm already to get, reading. Yeah. <laughs> so it's um it's great that you step forward. Thank, thank you. you very much. You're welcome. welcome and thank you. No, please go ahead. Did you go to school for plant, or how did you get into it originally? Did you go um, I started out as a geographer, and I was actually um, one of the people telling uh, Stop and Shop where they put their supermarkets. And then I went back to school um, for city planning at Harvard. Oh, cool. Interesting. Wow. Oh, well, great. Thank you so much for stepping forward. It looks like you have such an Any, yeah, Anyone else have yeah. questions? Yeah. No. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Well, thank you. Um, <clears throat> uh, second. Well, Monica's already thinking, hmm, building study committee. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's been I moved. I recruit, recruited to be the planner, but she was all set. Yeah. 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 Be careful. You might have two or three committee assignments <laughs> before you leave. Here. It's not unusual, but uh, yes. all those in favor say aye. 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 Oppose zero. The uh, nomination. Great. Uh, Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, uh, Kathleen is on her way back from a trip with the COA, so she is a bit late. If we could uh, circle back to her. Is she coming or do she, we is she is still coming? Yes. Oh, good. Okay. Where was the COA today? Um, somewhere in New Hampshire. Yes. Oh, yep. Yep. oh neat. Yep. It's a long way and it's Yeah. 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 Awesome. <laughs> okay, let's uh, the consent agenda, uh, approval of minutes, and the resignation of Jill Marshall from the Beautification Committee. Is there a motion? Mm. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move the board approve all non-held items on the consent agenda. Second. Moved and second. Any further discussion? Mm. Just to thank Jill for her service. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes please. You. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed zero. The motion passes uh, four zero. Mr. Chairman, uh, since we do have a few minutes before the tax class hearing, um, Perhaps we could go to Selectman and Town Administrator updates. That way we don't jump into something. Oh, what time's the hearing? Seven, seven o'clock. Oh, got it. <laughs> Perfect. Um, first of all, I, I mean, I'm just going to jump into this. Uh, I want to, <clears throat> and I, I, I wrote a letter to the editor, uh, but I was really impressed with the town of Rockport uh, and their ability to vote the uh, town barn through. Uh, I know it wasn't uh, popular in terms of people's taxes going up but there, at some point you have to think about the safety of the uh, individuals that work there and and uh, um, all you need to do in my opinion is go up to the facility that we have and and uh, it's almost like the people are working in squalor I mean it, it, it it's really uh, that might be a little over dramatic I understand but uh, not, I, not really yeah well, it, it, it was it was it, it was pretty bad so um, I was amazed uh, at you know during this whole debate, talking to people and they, oh, we we're only seven thousand, eight thousand people a year round. We need a facility like this, and and I would say, have you had an opportunity to see what those folks are working in? And I was just very very pleased. So uh, we talked about it a little bit during public comment, but uh, I was very impressed with uh, the citizens. And although 108 votes is not a lot, I think I thought it was great. Yeah. Can I add something? To Please. Do you mind? So, of course. I, and I know there was like a little scuttlebutt, like what a low turnout it was, but it actually wasn't low turnout. I, I believe it was higher turnout than our last selectman election. Correct. It was higher than April. <laughs> it was higher than our April election. I mean, sometimes like highly contested selectman races get higher, and obviously national but really just presidential elections are higher but um in general i mean the people who vote are the people who vote and who make the decisions i was just i'm feeling energized that the majority of people who voted um care enough to like invest in the infrastructure of the town and the future and we are i mean it's the letters to the editor um i know mel wrote some letters that were just super like objective and and fact based, but the people who, and Monica and her committee, but really just so fact based. Some I ran into someone at soccer on Saturday, and they said, for several years I was against this, and I went up there, and I, you know, I read the information. I went up and I took one of the tours, and I said to myself, I wouldn't let my employees work up here. Like it's time for time for the town to invest in this. So I was just, Excellent. I think the way it rolled out and the education, the whole thing just worked perfectly and I'm feeling you know sometimes we leave town meeting feeling a little 
you know, deflate it. You know what I mean? Sometimes no. in some of the comments get us a little bit down. But I honestly, um, a few of us were here after the election that night, and I was, I felt energized. So I'm excited about the future. And, you know, sometimes we all have to chip in and, and spend money on things. That's life. It's just like with our own homes. Yeah. And so. that, that facility was built in 1956. Yeah. It's, and it's well beyond its useful life. No. <laughs> no, that, that. Selectman so Donnelly, well, well, well put. Uh, we're build, you know, we're building it for future generations, which is, you know, which is what the generations before us did. So, and I, I look forward to, to seeing the end product. And you know, when you come into town uh, and, and uh, you drive by <clears throat> Granite Savings Bank, and then quickly look to the right, you know the. DPW facility it needs some care. Yeah, it's needs totally some, embarrassing. Like let's just care, cut to the chase. You know, right. it, it's it's going to clean that area <laughs> yeah. area up yeah. even more so, and uh, and the men and women of the DPW are going to have a facility that reflects the hard work that they do. So yep. Yep. that was great. Yep. Yep. And it's just democracy in action. I mean, yeah. some people didn't want it. Some did. The the yeas prevailed, and we'll work hard to make it a beautiful facility and keep it under budget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. I mean, we're all, we're all working on the same thing. Yeah. Yep. Moving in the, the right town. direction. Yep. Yep. Good. I also just want to point out uh, Harbor Fest or Harvest Fest was wonderful. Mm. Uh, I, yeah. I, I know Selectman uh, I know. Wilkinson. I know. I can't. I like, can't even control myself about how. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had a wonderful time down there. I, I was there earlier, then came back later. But uh, Selectman Wilkinson and I were on... Uh, uh, 1623 uh, talking about well they the totally threw us off they were like oh can you and Paul come and be interviewed about Harvest Fest so we're like sure so we show up and the first thing they're like let's talk about the DPW barn and Paul and I are like whoa whoa yeah. Yeah. we're like what next yeah. Yeah. I was but expecting was cool. a couple of softball questions yeah. at first you know just you know, oh, just to warm me up a little yeah. bit but you know, they got right to the point but I thought cool. I thought that was great and, and uh, um, I thought place was packed. Oh my God, it was. You know. The lot was full. The trolley was standing room only. Yeah. 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 I was in Gloucester prior to going, I had to get back there around 3 o'clock. I was in Gloucester around 2.30 and there was no one around. There was no one. And then until you got to yeah. you know, the lights, you, you know, it got to beyond Shaw's and then everyone started backing up. So everyone was in town, okay, and it, which is great. And yeah. I think there were a, a lot of people, more 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 people than expected, yeah. you know, which is great. Yeah, and the people coming off the trains, coming from Granite Street, I yeah. mean, piles of people. I mean, like hundreds of people coming off those trains, yeah. walking in big yeah. groups. Yep. And I always down, say it's one wonderful. of the last days of the year that we who live here see each other outside. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, yeah. like, Saturday in the middle of February when you, I put this on Facebook, when yeah. you drive to Ace and don't see any other cars. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. kind of like... It's Marvelous one of the last, but it was honestly, the, I, re, I think it's the ninth anniversary, the ninth, uh, eighth. eighth, and I remember when it was like just an idea, and I remember like helping them lug pumpkins to Dock Square the first time, and what it's become is yeah. just yeah, it's huge. Yeah, and crazy. I just, I just want to say thank you to the Rockport Exchange. Yeah. That's yeah. a volunteer, yeah. all volunteer effort, um, and they put on an unbelievable event. Yeah. Um, I looked down Bearskin Neck at one point. It looked busier than it looked in the summer. Oh yeah, it was packed. It was packed. The whole yeah. the whole yeah. downtown was yeah. packed. Yeah. So yeah. great for you know thankful yeah. to all yeah. the business so owners that stayed that. open. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of them had texted me the night before like I'm worried it's going to be too busy and I said never worry about success. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you know it no it's just it's gotten bigger and bigger. But yeah. they've and they have stuck with the character and ta you know what I mean yeah. the character of the event. Right. They've done a nice job. The addition of the liquor, I think, has been a nice, you know, it's yeah. been something that people look forward right. to, and it's mm -hmm. done very controlled. I don't think there have been any issues, any no, alcohol-related no. issues. No. In fact, uh, at 5 o'clock at the close of, uh, uh, of it, uh, the chief and the assistant chief walked down, and people were... Were you there then? And I was gone. <laughs> uh, but there, I was told uh, uh, that... Uh, uh, so uh, it was all it was all great. You cool. know, I, I think. Uh, um, and a, a zero waste event. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I read about... That's even more important. Yeah, they had like six bags of trash, eight, six bags of compost, and ten bags of recycling or something. Mm. Yeah, wow. it's amazing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Super cool. Yeah. That should be highlighted. Yeah. yeah. It really should yeah. be. Yeah. You know. Yep. Yep. Anyway. So, uh, and what a beautiful day. Yeah. Mm. Perfect yeah. weather. Perfect. Gorgeous day. Yep. So our next big, big uh, celebration in town is going to be obviously Christmas in Rockport. Or am I missing? Christmas in Rockport and Makers. Yeah. Makers. 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 They're all coming yep. together. It'll be a busy holiday season. Yeah, it will. Good. Yeah. That's good. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's true. Yep. I would enjoy that. Yep. Very much. I think this is, that's going to be coming up to 25 years. Uh, no, it can't be that much. Is it 20, 23? 23. 23. 23. Wow. Old. Wow, that's amazing. Okay, any uh, anyone else on in terms of uh, updates? Do updates? No. Oh. Uh, I do. Um, let's see. Um, Mitch and I did all the third grades at Town Hall. On the 9th, which was, and Diane was helping, and we had a <laughs> wonderful time with all three to four classes of third graders touring the whole building and then over to the library. They were absolutely the highlight. I mean, <laughs> they, it, this was their last stop. Uh, Mitch <laughs> yes. put on one of these, and the gavel were the highlights. They learned lots about the building. Um, they learned from the guys in the engineering department about big maps and um, the DPW. They got to learn up in the um, town clerk's office how to use the clickers and that their <laughs> parents were going to be going to the polls in a few days or town meetings and how they use clickers and they got to decide whether they wanted hamburgers or hot dogs or <laughs> what things they wanted. It was really nice. And they had a blast with... Um, hammering here and <laughs> talking on here, ordering pizzas, and, and just had a great time. It was, a, it was very nice. It was I tried to talk a little bit about volunteering as they got older and parents <laughs> who volunteer, and, and maybe they'd like to volunteer on different committees when they grew up. Why wait? Yeah, right. Like, like start yeah, now. They were great. <laughs> yeah. um, then the night of the election that evening, um, we had Council on Aging up at the police station. Um, and that was really good. We learned um, a lot from the Rockport Housing Authority came and did a presentation of an update of what they're doing up there. They have between five and 600 on the wait list for <coughs> Millbrook Park. Five to 600 people on that really? wait list. And 600, 600 people, people for Kite Field Road for the two to three, four ho bedroom places. So the needs for those are amazing and they don't have a fast turnover. They do give preference to veterans homeless, and Rockport people. Um, they um, had lots of people apply at the Senior Center for the Charlie Card. They had the people come down, and 55 people applied for that. Um, they had a, the seniors helping seniors had a day where they took air conditioners out, raked leaves, did all kinds oh of things yeah. the senior class did That's for senior cool. citizens. They had 25 people signed up for that, which was as many as they could take. Um, They've got a new exercise class in the evenings, and that's going well. They've got between 5.30 and 6.30 at night, and that's like 17, 18 people are doing that. Right. So I like being on that. That's new. Thank you. Um, CPC was after that, and um, it looks like we're going to maybe get, they're going to raise the fee um, for the real estate tax part, um, not tax, but when they sell a property and things, and it could go up, the amount we get is going to probably go up about 50% this year. So we will probably get um, 170 to 180,000 more for CPC revenue this year than we did last year. Um, so that's good. We did a lot of talk about dream applications for this coming year. The applications are going to be due Monday, February 3rd at 4 p.m. is the deadline. Um, is it February 3rd? February 3rd. Okay. We talked about some of the things people talked about was firehouse trust building, affordable housing. Um, um, someone talked about the house over at Hollibut Point, the Tyler Silver House. That is the big white um, Victorian that Hollibut Point in the state owns. I suggested that maybe that would be a good application to put in for affordable housing to see if we could save it because the state right now wants to tear it down. 
and that is a beautiful old house that could do two families easily. Mm -hmm. um, they talked about um, the ball fields. Um, the housing authority has some things they'd like to put in for. They had a lot of dream applications, and we're they're going to go continue on that in their next meeting. Um, uh, great ideas, um, great group of people. I think that was all. Okay. That's it. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. No, I just wanted to thank you for meeting the third graders. Oh, you're welcome. They lo absolutely loved it. I had I had been to the third grade, I think, the day before, yeah, yeah. or a couple days yeah. before, and they couldn't wait to come here, and I couldn't come for that, but my we third grader Finn's came picture. home. I got a video of Finn hitting the, and he came home and He'd told probably me. probably do a better job in the current change. He did. <laughs> And he, the most fascinating thing he told me was learning, seeing the sewer maps, which I found interesting, <laughs> and wanted to know if we knew how much cash the town keeps in the vault. <laughs> 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 if I thought it was millions. You, and I was like, yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> Finn's going to be uh, either a reporter or a investigative reporter or something, a politician. Something. Yeah, yeah. something <laughs> to do. Yeah, something that's, that's going to yeah. keep my He's hands loved full. this, right? He right loves all yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they and his friend, like, they absolutely love, like, who would think, yeah. right? And I remember last year when we did it, all they wanted to do was hit the gavel. Yeah. That's literally yeah. all, you know, and beyond yeah. the idea of being on television. Yeah. Is just <laughs> and then this time it was the, the microphone. The real microphone. So they were ordering pizzas yeah. and, and <laughs> doing that kind of thing. And yeah. Um, and I did talk because when I was in, I think it was third grade in Rockport Elementary School, the year it was a presidential election year, and um, we did a mock so election. Stop it. And we did. <laughs> you, you, you opened it right up. We did a mock election. So I was thinking it would be cool if, take the if we did clickers. something, if we did either lent them the clickers or if we put voting booths at our polling places and let kids vote as well. Oh, I know some. Yeah, the idea. teacher yeah. told me that the town she grew up in in New, in New Hampshire did that. So I'll kind of brainstorm yeah. and yeah. come up great. with something. Yeah. But we have all these third graders who are engaged. Like, oh, let's very, keep it going. Yeah. Very. yeah. So we, we would have like these mock uh, places for them like to where vote. we vote. Yeah. yeah. Like at the community, so that when we go in to vote, like kids can go in to vote. And could we keep tally? Um, yeah. yeah. Totally. Sure. I, I'm sure we. Mitch is like great. <laughs> I, I think the clerk would, the clerk's office would probably be thrilled to do something. No, like that. super yeah. cool. So we did it at the yeah. school when I was young, but um, I think it would be cool if we did, you know, if we oh, did yeah. it through the town. So when they go with their parents, yeah, they can do the yeah. too. That's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I love that idea. Yeah, that's anyway. a great Good. idea. Good. Cool. Okay. Anyone else, Mr. Chairman? Uh, yes, sir. An update for everyone on the status of the legislation for exempting uh, the town from civil service. So it's oh, been yeah. assigned to Bill Number S twenty three sixty. It uh, was scheduled was referred to the Joint Committee on Public Service, and it had a hearing yesterday afternoon. We're waiting for the results of that hearing. Um, the chief and I sent a joint a letter in saying that uh, summarizing the town's stance that it's passed town meeting. The selectmen support this. The union supports it, and we request favorable uh, consideration. So we're waiting to hear now, and we're, we're hoping great. that it uh, moves quickly and without any kind of issue. Normally, in the past, we hadn't had to really do anything, but after our last piece of legislation, they didn't yeah, think we needed to make one. a visit, but they yeah. said, well, if you yeah. could do a quick letter uh, Monday morning and send it over. So we, we, we did. So uh, we're hoping that that uh, progresses quickly. Great. That's great. Great. Cool. So. Wonderful. Great. That's exciting. I think okay. Is. Anyone else? Okay, hearing here. none, I think we're, we're at 7.08, and we can start our uh, tax classification hearing. Is there a motion? There is. I move that the Board of Selectmen open the annual tax classification hearing. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Roll call vote. Selectman Wilkinson? Aye. Selectman George? Aye. Selectman Donnelly? Aye. Selectman Murphy? Aye. We are now open into executive session, I mean, excuse me, into uh, the, the uh, public hearing. Um, Mr. Mr. Chairman, the yeah, principal please. assessor and the chair of the board of assessors are both here. Yeah, yeah. would you like you to read? read yeah. George, oh, yes. <laughs> he snuck in. We had a um, publication, uh, Town of Rockport Tax Classification Hearing, Tuesday, October 22nd, 2019, 7 p.m. Uh, we are now at 7.08. Conference Room A, Rockport Town Hall, discussion of unified or multiple property tax classifications. Board of Selectmen, Chairman Paul F. Murphy, 
uh, Gloucester Daily Times, 10, 18, 19. It was ad advertised. Diane. I never remember exactly how we do this, whether I just sort of present what the uh, Board of Assessors has talked about or whether you guys ask questions first. But, I think you um, just give it to us. Like yeah, it it's um, <laughs> basically what you're doing is you're deciding whether we have a uh, flat rate or a split rate. Uh, split rate meaning that commercial, industrial, and personal property would pay a higher tax rate. Um, many cities and towns that have a lot of commercial property do this. It, it honestly doesn't make a lot of sense for Rockport because in the last couple of years we've gone from 6% of our tax levy being commercial to now 4%. So it's not, uh, it really doesn't make sense for small towns. But uh, in your packet, I think you were given all the what ifs, you know, how the changes would go. Um, and it really, in order to, to be a benefit to residential, um, commercial would have to pay an astronomical fee. And it's, uh, uh, not exactly commercial friendly, I don't think. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people ask, you know, they say, well, that means we'll, ha we'll make more money, the town will make more money. It isn't true. It's what it is, is you're simply shifting the burden to someone else to pay, but the, the revenue is still the same. same. So. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. So that's really. Yeah, thank so you. I think it's a hearing, so just. In, any uh, questions from uh, the audience? Okay. <laughs> Mr. R. Arsinian, <laughs> also known as Toby. Toby Arsinian, 95 Granite Street. Uh, I don't have any objections to the single rate, which you've always favored and doubtless will again. It's the one chance that we get to uh, speak with the assessors. Is it possible to diverge? into other issues that concern the assessors? No, I don't think we can legally. We're, we're, legally, yeah. we can't because it's a public hearing. So I see. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, they have um, posted meetings monthly, I believe. Right. At, uh, yeah, you can public. come in and talk to us, Toby, if you want. I wish to talk to you about their affairs. OK. OK, good. Could do, he could do that at their meeting, right? Mm, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's all in public. Yep. No, we're not right. hiding anything. Okay, great. Anyone else from the public? Anyone from the Board of Selectmen? Nothing. Is there a motion to close the tax classification well, here? Well, I know Tim, <coughs> Tim Good is here, too. Anything? Oh. Just coming for the excitement. <laughs> He's a tax-paying <laughs> citizen at the moment. Uh, I move that the Board of Selectmen close the tax classification hearing. Okay. Second. Moved and second. And Selectman Donnelly? Aye. Selectman George? Aye. Selectman Wilkinson? Aye. Selectman Murphy? Aye. Okay. Passes 4-0. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move that the Board of Selectmen adopt a unified tax rate for fiscal year 20. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. 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 And the motion passes 4-0. Great. May Thank I, you very much. May I ask if you have the signed <laughs> I hard copy possibly? I signed it. Did you sign it? I haven't signed <laughs> I think it. Paul, I think just Paul has to sign it. Nice to see you as always. Thanks, Thank you. Sam. Your grandson looks so oh, cute. Oh. It's your oh my God. How do you have a, how do you, first of all, how do you have a great grandson? <laughs> He's beautiful. He's adorable. Yeah, he you, you and Kay are great. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's only like 40 <laughs> years difference. Older than yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yes, I was just telling. She doesn't think my, that my though. Like about when thirty. She was in kindergarten. Everybody said, "What do you want to do when you grow up?" She always said, "A mother." And so then she had kids, and now that's I have great grandchildren. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> that's cool <laughs> though to be oh, young and beautiful. have great grandchildren. That's awesome. Yeah, so Little Mason. Thank you. So that's great. cute. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Diane. Thanks, Diane. Thank you. Okay, action list: DPW Building Committee. Oh, wait, oh, I think we skipped Selectman's briefings. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Selectman briefings. Uh, we're doing uh, Conservation Commission boardwalks over the marshes. Mm -hmm. Who's here from uh, Conservation? A bunch. I think Dave's in the back. Okay. Chairman let's see. Dave and Jerry. Yeah. Come to the committee all. table. Come on up. That was beautiful when you said What? I don't want to, like, interrupt you. Yeah, no, okay. please don't. All right. Mr. Chairman, while the um, uh, commission is, is <laughs> making their way up, the, uh, they'll, they'll walk through some of the process and discussion that they've gone through um, on, on the board's end. Um, <clears throat> we'll look to circle back after they, they present what you, they have and what's in the packets to 
discuss how the board may feel about um, moving forward on, on, on its portion. So both, if things were to move forward, if, if everybody were to say they wanted to maintain these, both parties would need to say yes. Uh, w one party saying no um, we would, would certainly stop any, any process. So once the Conservation Commission uh, walks through where they are in their process, we'll circle back and, and, and get a flavor of the, the board and if that's okay. Great. Can I just ask a question? I think sure. maybe there might be other people here for this topic tonight, just so we have an idea. Are you a but, a boardwalk or boardwalk owner? Okay, boardwalk owners. Okay, just so we get a sense yep. of who's here. Anyone else? Okay. <laughs> boardwalks, boardwalks. Okay. Great. Okay. The floor is yours. Okay, so I'm Gary Falco, the conservation office, uh, conservation um, agent for Town of Rockport, Conservation Commission. Um, the basically, since I've been here almost 15 years, uh, these boardwalks have been across the salt marsh and there's been back and forth with the Board of Selectmen on because the salt marsh is owned by the town. However, it's also a salt marsh that the commission is obligated to protect. And in May of this year, um, someone came to us and said, let's bring this back up. Let's bring up this issue and see if this Board of Selectmen can actually be working with us to try and um, I believe this talk, talk about this. Come up before. Oh, it has several yeah. times, several yeah. times. Oh, years, I mean, several yeah. times. Mm -hmm. and, and several iterations, it keeps going back. It's in your field, it's in our field, it's in your field. And now, when I talked to, uh, to Mitch, he's, he talked to town council who suggested that the commission do their job, which means we need to protect the salt marsh. We need to reach out to these owners of the salt, of the boardwalks because they are on top of the salt marsh. Um, and uh, they are damaging the salt marsh, or they're or not being not. The salt marsh is not thriving with them as well. Um, and so uh, the the commission contacted the salt marsh, uh, the, the the boardwalk boardwalk owners, had them all come in. We went out and saw them again. And you have in your packet a photo essay uh, that I did years ago, probably, I think 2007, 2009. I did a, a rather detailed um, uh, ex position about every th all the boardwalks, how long they were, where they were, how high they were, what kind of boardwalks they were. One of them has actually fallen out because when we sent out the letters and told people that we were going to be requiring that they get permitted under the Wetlands Protection Act, that person said, all I have is these boards on the, on the salt marsh. He picked them up and that's it. And so his are gone. And that, I believe, was 63, 63, I think it's 63, um, uh, 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 Thatcher Road. Road. Oh, thank you. So there's um, five and seven Seaview Street, three Seaview Street, 65 Thatcher Road, 63 Sat Thatcher Road, 61 Thatcher Road. There's also two on um, that were on um, Laurel Acres, 13 Laurel Acres. That one, the storms have changed the the stream, and this boardwalk is not there anymore because. The sand has moved in. So, how many are there total right now? There were seven, and and okay. we're 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 working with four. Okay. Because there were seven, and I just named those seven. Okay. Um, eleven and 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 um and thirteen, um, Laurel Acres, we didn't consider here. First of all, thirteens is not there anymore. Eleven is a bridge, and it's mostly across the pond that's north of there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you look at your map, yeah. it's up on the right hand mm -hmm. side. So um, we're talking about four. Four. And then how those four, do you know how long they've been there? Sorry. To, we, we don't, I don't know how long they've been here. I know that they've been here for a long, long time. I and mean, you look in the 1990s on flyover maps, they're there. You, they're there. In the 80s, they're yeah. there. Um, so I, none of these four were put up in the last year or two? No. Okay. no. Although no, they no, have okay. been re- They've been sure. They, they've up been yeah. updated. Yeah. When you know they fall apart in, this, right. in that kind right. of thing, they have up and up. Right. Never have they been before the they're Conservation Commission. They're, they're right. not new. They're not they're new. They're not new. Right. So, okay. They're all. They're all great. Um, so, the concern, obviously, of the commission is protection of the salt marsh and the salt marsh. We and I submitted. I gave to you a letter that we had given to each of the members uh, uh, who, who owned a boardwalk that explains our background of what we need to do. So what we need to do is. Make sure that these are pr uh, appropriately in place, and the Wetlands Protection Act actually allows for that. It doesn't dissuade people from putting in a boardwalk as long as it's in in a in a correct manner. And what it needs to be is off of the the salt marsh grasses, 
and it needs to be as high off of it as it is wide. So if you go one foot off, it has to be, if it's three feet wide, it has to be three feet tall off of that salt marsh so that the, the sun can get in and make sure oh. that the, the vegetation is maintained. Okay. Um, that is, the, salt marshes are, 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 um, are good for, for several things. One, and, and the kind of thing that w is more real for people who are living near them, is their protection for flood, flood damage and storm, and storm damage. Um, the, the, the vegetation there buffers the waves. It also, um, you know, it keeps, it keeps pollutants out, the actual um, systems there. Um, it's also a habitat for spawning finfish and all kinds of wildlife, you know, even your lobsters and everything, all those kind of things that, that, that sequester in there in, the, in different times of their life, of their life cycles. Um, that's, that's kind of where we are in trying to protect this. We need to have these things in a permitted format. Um, number two. Uh, can I ask They're, a question, Jerry? R oh. just, just real quick, because okay. the reason we're here with you, why it just hasn't come to us, is that these are a cross town property. Right. So they go from these people's property that have some, of, quite often these people's property will have some of the salt marsh, and then the rest of salt marsh will be town, and it goes over to the beach. And it's an avenue for them to get from their properties over to the beach. Um, they are what you might consider private in the sense that who else would use it but them because not to anybody else is going to go on their property but that's the idea one of them gets picked up every year and that's number five and seven there's they share one and they but they place just boards on the salt marsh which is not good for the salt marsh is that included in this four yes, yes. okay may i ask a question now mm -hmm. um is there a stipulation as to the materials that can be used so, for example, treated lumber or that kind of thing. Uh, when everyone thinks of treated lumber, they think back of the '80s when yeah. we used to have the. Right. You know, that's that's not the same kind of treated lumber that there is. Yeah. There definitely treated lumber is still used. Um, it th there is definitely I mean, it, it, but it's not the same kind of thing that you're thinking that that's going uh, to be. Are there any stipulations as no. to materials? No. Okay. And is there <clears throat> any sign off? From either conservation or anyone from the town, they'd have to have yeah. to apply. They have to submit have to, to us an application, yeah. which is a notice of intent. Mm -hmm. They come and have a hearing. Everyone gets to hear. We this is for the replacement. If we had right, a right, if, okay. right for a boardwalk. Let's yeah. just assume there's not yeah. one, and they yeah. want a boardwalk okay. across. They would have to come to us. They would have to meet the performance standards and the requirements that the state would have for. Oh my God placing a boardwalk across the marsh. And um, so then we'd have to, uh, we have talked with the, the homeowners and suggested that they hire somebody who is in the know on how to do this and how to do it correctly. And there are definitely are contractors who have done it in Gloucester that have, there's plenty of them out there to, to be able to pick from. Um, but th that's the kind of thing that we should have solid information that really explains to the commission how the performance standards will be met and how this will be good for the salt marsh. I believe that, personally, I believe that if you take, if, 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 they, if they're going to be allowed on the salt marsh, they have to come off, they mm -hmm. have to come up. And by doing that, that will in and of itself enhance the, the salt marsh. Okay, thank you, Jerry. Uh, Denise? Yeah, so um, I think the other consideration here is that this is town-owned land. Right. Mm -hmm. and I know that other towns charge a fee for people to put a private boardwalk across town-owned lands, and I think we should think about that. Yeah, I mean, uh, personally, I know they've been there a long time. Yeah, I mean, I would. But the reality is, yeah, right. yeah, they've yeah, been using right. town land all that time. Right, but but I feel like Good that's point. people's point. That was people's responsibility before us. I, I don't know. I well, I feel totally comfortable if someone were to yeah. were to apply now and and go through the process to put up a new boardwalk. Go through the process. I just I feel uncomfortable charging people who have had a boardwalk up for forty years. That just seems retroactive. more than yeah. It seems yeah. retroactive to me. I mean, I, that's just kind of a a personal thing. I'm totally fine with charging people who apply and put up a new one at this point. But I feel like, I mean, maybe they would have chosen back then not to put one up. If you know what I mean, well, I don't they've know. They've got to replace them now anyway. 
right. or take them out and 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 if they just to take them out they will have to have a notice of intent because they will be working in our wetlands resource area yeah so of the cast question of the four um are any of the like if they were to walk in and apply for you know and apply for the permitting process would any of them be like be okay at this point or do they all need work we, we don't have applications we are not going to i'm not going to say that this commission is going to approve every single one of these i'm not going to say that i'm just saying that they're that they have to come to with an application and present and convince the commission that this is going to be good for the, the resource i mean I, I i have a feeling just like long beach you know that there can be obviously good things you can do out there to make it a better place and that's what i think will should be um presented to the commission as we, mm -hmm. you know it's, okay. it's there i i'd be curious to hear um dave what you were going to say or you look like you were going to yeah, say i was going to but jerry i just mentioned this here it's the whole they would have to need to, um sorry dave mckinnon chairman of the conservation commission um just the fact that they would also need to file an noi to remove them i wanted to make oh, okay. sure that, that was okay pointed out as well and I don't believe that many of them would meet any of the performance standards currently right. as they exist. They do, they do not, right. Okay. okay. All right. Anyone else? There, there is one. Yes. Um, 65? Is it 65? Are you with from 60, 61. 61? That where the, the marsh has now gone, the, 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 the popples and the sand have moved so much into the salt marsh that the boardwalk is pretty much just over the the very much very little of it is on town land it's just on the very edge where it's where it's um it could be a, where, where it meets the beach i think he's shaking his head that it's is it not? it's all it's entirely it's entirely on if it's entirely on his property he has to show that but that's the kind of thing so that maybe this committee it won't, oh, won't but have he anything could, to do with him. Okay. Yeah, he, he, that would need to be vetted through the proper process. With it still has to go. He still has to go through the same the process. Same. But but he will not have to have. Um, okay. You know there should not be any kind of a um, indication that you would have to be involved if it's not on town. Not on, on town, town land. Okay. Yeah. Yes. He has a question too. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Fran Osiello. Um, the primary goal is for us to minimize the impact of the salt marsh. It's part of our green infrastructure. Um, when we talk about coastal resiliency, it's up there. Mm. And um, many communities right now are really fiercely looking at ways to protect and restore. In today's Gloucester Daily Times, there is talking about a lecture tomorrow night, which I can't go to because we have a meeting. But it is talking about ways to restore <laughs> and protect the salt marsh because I think more and more people are realizing how important it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is the first line of defense for flooding, it is a nursery habitat. It is a flyover and resting place for migratory birds. It's also used for carbon storage. So there are many, many important functions. But I think the coastal resiliency is something that really should be on our minds more and more. Um, so I, I just want to say that one of the things that, in, in talking about this, I'm fairly new to the commission, but one of our, our first discussions was to immediately go to building a better boardwalk. And what I mean by a better boardwalk is a more environmentally sensitive boardwalk. And yes, I think that is certainly a first discussion and a first step. I don't think it's the only option that we have. This is a situation where I believe the regulations say that you may, mm -hmm. you may allow for a boardwalk. It doesn't say that you must or you should. Um, all of these private structures that are on town property are all in very close proximity to each other. I think that you can see, I, I wasn't clear how many boardwalks we were talking about, but you can see that they're all, they're all fairly close and they're all together within maybe like a half a mile. Mm -hmm. So in looking at some of the maps, when I went home, um, I looked at some of our conservation maps and when we went on our site visit, we only went to three boardwalks. So I sort of focused on one area but what I was tr thinking of was to streamline the work, the cost, and the ongoing maintenance, and very importantly, to minimize the impact on the salt marsh. So I took a look at some maps, and if I could, I made some copies, if I could show them to you. Of, it, it's just something else to consider. They actually have, they may have that. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, go ahead, Fran. I, yeah. Okay, uh, why don't, and, and let's, let's continue with, uh, so is anyone here, 
currently have a boardwalk that would like to address the Board of Selectmen. Yes, sir. Thank you, Laura. Well, do you want to let Fran? Yeah. I, yeah. Yes. Let, uh, is there anything? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Well, I, I just wanted to present an, an alternative. I Like I said, I looked on the conservation maps, so I don't know how current they are, or but someone will correct me, I'm sure, if I'm wrong. But what I saw was on Sea View. If you look at, I'm sorry, I don't have. Maybe we can share. Um, if you look at Sea View and you see some arrows that I drew, so what I saw was between two properties on Sea View um, that there looks like there is a right of way or um, a paper street. I'm not really sure. Yeah. So what came to mind when I saw that was to have a common boardwalk. So rather than have several boardwalks, to have a common boardwalk, because you'd be streamlining the costs, the maintenance, and everything. And, and actually, I think it is the town that has to apply for the boardwalks, because you, it is on your property. Right. And so it, it is something of a streamlining for, for many things. But there's going to be ongoing maintenance that's going to be needed for boardwalks as well. And I think one of the things that David wrote in his letter, um, which I think you have, was dated July 24th, that went to the property owners. Um, it says, the health of the salt marsh and its water quality are paramount to all the life it supports when the flow of water is interrupted by structures such as boardwalks, invasive non-native plant species replace native species, slowing the creek water and decreasing biodiversity. So there are, there is some impact. It's a cumulative impact. When you have several boardwalks that have several pilings that are in the salt marsh, I am convinced that there is some degradation to the salt marsh over time. If we're talking about putting them up above the marsh, certainly that is better than what exists and we need to have some uniformity. I totally agree with that. But to think that there isn't some kind of impact, I, I don't agree. Because if we're so concerned about the spacing of the boardwalks to let sunlight in, then that's telling us that it has some kind of impact on our marshes. And it's so critical, especially right now, to really be protecting, if not restoring, some of our marshes, as you might see from some of these pictures, um, could use some help. So um, I'm just presenting something else okay, on the no, table to, to be considered. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. I'm, you, you want to? Mark with okay, you go to the microphone, please, just so we can record <coughs> it. My name is Mark Catalona. I'm at 61 Thatcher Road. I just want to start by giving you some background information that I believe to be extremely accurate. The property where we are, 61 Thatcher Road, the property used to go to the high water mark. And the town took a portion of it by eminent domain. Now that goes back many, many years, maybe I think to the late 50s or early 60s. This property goes back with my wife's family and my wife, who's not here tonight, <coughs> to the 1940s. There's been a boardwalk there since then and probably before. So it's over 50 years. Well over well 50 years. Well over 50 years, years. yeah. yeah. Um, our, our boardwalk today uh, sits on our property. Um, and I believe, I'm going to go back for a second. When the town took the property, they used to, as you know, as they built the big wall of rock to protect the parking lot and, the, and part, of the, uh, part of the salt marsh. They used to do that all the way down to Salt Street. They stopped doing that. They didn't keep going. And, and, and that hurt, probably hurt the salt marsh. I'm not sure. I'm not an expert on it, so I'm, I'm a little concerned that uh, I think the owners have done pretty well taking care of the salt marsh and keeping an eye on it than maybe the town at times. I'm a little, it, it, you know, because they didn't keep that wall going. I'm not sure exactly why they didn't. At, at, I was told years back that it was because of uh, cost. They didn't want to have to do more and more. Uh, things that I, I'm concerned about uh, additionally are that, that I'm hearing, um, one thing I'm hearing for the first time tonight 
is that there's been damage to the salt marsh by the boardwalks. I have not heard that before at any of the meetings I attended, and I believe I attended most or all of them, and I, I never heard that comment. So I'm a little concerned that it's being presented to you that way tonight when it's never been, I've never heard that before. And if that's been stated before, someone please tell me because that means I missed it. Uh, I'm a little concerned also about, I think I'm hearing that the boardwalks have to be removed tonight. Someone. No, this and, is just a. a uh, not tonight, the, but <laughs> they're going to have to be removed, like start all over again, do a permit, hopefully it goes through, do the notices, hopefully people don't object that it causes a board to, to vote against it or the board itself just decides to vote against it. Um, I, I, I brought that up. There's no vote tonight. No, I know, yeah. but I brought that up yes, months no, ago like um, during the first meeting of this on this subject with the conservation that we're going to have to remove these. And, um, you know, I think there was a little concern that they didn't want to answer that directly, but indirectly it was, oh, no, no, we'll, we'll, we're not, you know, we'll see. Well, I didn't hear that tonight. So I'm a little concerned about that. Uh, my particular boardwalk, our particular boardwalk, my wife's and I's, is on our property. Um, it's, it meets, I believe, a lot of the requirements that the Conservation Commission, uh, through the rules of the state, uh, require. Um, so I, I feel good about it. Um, I, I'm hearing that we're going to have to possibly hire people because I'm not an expert at it, I'm not the engineer, I'm not an environmental expert, and go expend a lot of money, and it's a lot, just, just to let you know, it's all thousands of dollars to get this looked at so we can present something to, to be approved. And I'm a little concerned that after many, many years, premature. to be, you know, to be put on that. I, I understand, but yeah, okay. I want to make no, sure, no, no, I'm, no, I'm, no, no, totally. I'm, I'm yeah. sharing this with property, you the best I can. Yeah. No, I, I totally uh, get it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me think if there's any other notes I made here. Well, obviously, I don't know if I have any more because of my scribbling, but I'm concerned about where this goes. Um, you know, boardwalks on town property, not on town property. Yep. Boardwalks over the salt marsh. Um, you know, the history of it, and um, I, I and. As far as having to go through the process of possibly removing it, starting over, getting engineering work done, and, and getting plans drawn, and then actually doing the work, doing, getting the permit, doing the notifications, and that cost, like I said, if we go that route, costing a lot of money, uh, <laughs> to me, it's like being punished for something that was never done incorrectly in the first place, meaning many years ago. Now, I know that some of these laws say that doesn't matter, <coughs> and that just tells me there's something wrong with the law, but beyond that, uh, I, I want to ask the board to do anything they can to instill, to minimize the impact mm -hmm. and cost and to the homeowners, and that only, you know, that especially if you, you know, whatever boardwalk you have, and, and for years, that boardwalk had a lot to do with the property and its value. Um, so that's how I'll leave it. Thank Great. You. Thank you very much. Okay. Anyone okay. else from the okay. David? Yeah. David, just a few things. Um, in the letter that we sent out, it actually says in here that um, the, when the water flows is interrupting structures. Um, or sorry, it says the health of the salt marsh and its wa water quality are paramount. So it was in the letter that we sent. That to everyone, it, that, so that, that the, was not the salt marsh. something did, that we didn't discuss and, prior. And may, if I may, the Wetland Protection Act applies to public and private it, property. Everything. It does, and everything. currently so these boardwalks it, are in the violation. Law is the law, yeah. and if it wasn't enforced in the past, well, shame on us. But that doesn't mean that we should continue not to enforce it because mm -hmm. it wasn't enforced in the past. And one of the reasons we're here tonight as well is that we didn't want. Um, these homeowners just spend money without getting any answer about the town ownership sure. part first. Because yeah. they could have just went ahead and applied for the permit and right. been told no. Right. But we wanted to make sure that, you know, save no, them that's as much right. as possible if they came here first. Right. So We've got to get all this worked out. I, the, the other thing is his boardwalk is raised. 
Um, ideally, in, in, in this situation, likely we will have someone that would assess that to make sure it's raised at the right level and, and that, it's, it, that it does meet. And where it does meet, we would, you know, that, that, that could be something that would be presented to us in that manner. Though, that's the kind of thing. When we said that they need, it, if someone was just going to remove their boardwalk or if they want to just leave it alone and the town has to remove it, that's what we meant about getting it out of there. Mm -hmm. So that removing a boardwalk or putting in a new boardwalk we would not make them tear down something that might be in compliance but to put it back up in the same way. That, right. That's just not the way this commission would work. Right. Okay. And then maybe the oh. people on the end. Yeah. Well, the woman on the one very the end. One. Hi. 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 One of the owners. One, microphone. Why don't you come up to the microphone? Yeah. 65 Thatcher Road. You got a name. Ivana Varello. My question is the boardwalks that were laying right on the marsh, I could see how things can't grow through them. Our boardwalk isn't laying right on the marsh. And every time I walk over that boardwalk, I'm walking through stuff that's going right through the slats because there is space in between them. So how do you determine or how sure can you be that it's not getting enough sunlight for it to be healthy or you know, doing what it's supposed to do? There, there is actually a dynamic of for every foot wide, it's a foot high off of the, off of the salt marsh soil, I mean, um, vegetation, so that if yours is two feet wide, it needs to be two feet off of it for, for sunlight to be able to come in because those plants do need sunlight. I would, I would venture to say that if you pulled up your boardwalk, you would have a strip of non-vegetated area where your boardwalk is right now. So that's, it needs to be for every foot <coughs> wide, it has to be a foot off of the salt marsh vegetation. That is, that is the rule. That's the requirement That's in the, requirement the wetland protection. So can, I ask, can I ask Jerry a question? So Jerry, considering that, um, so if theirs, is, if theirs is on, I'm just gonna assume theirs is on private property, right, just right. for conversation's sake. So if we're talking about three boardwalks, not obviously I think going forward in terms of if anyone were to apply, you know, if anyone were to like renovate a house, purchase a house and wanna build a boardwalk, they have to obviously now go through and comply with wetlands protection and whatever is decided upon for a process and if, if they're even going to be allowed or not, which they may not be going forward. I don't, I don't know. But for those, for those three, would there be, wouldn't there, if people had to like remove them and then re, wouldn't that damage the salt marsh again if something has been there for 60 years? Yeah, it'd be like, it'd be like taking off the boardwalk and letting it just grow on its own it's going to be it's no if they were if they were going to remove it yes. and then put something else in there would yes. that be damaging it, it, as well? it will be temperate there whenever you when somebody puts anything on a salt any kind of structure in a salt marsh is going to have temporary damage to it when you're doing it yeah and so, that and that that that's expected within the law yeah so i mean could there be consideration for like i don't it, for grandfathering you know j the three that are there and that are off and how they've been and then moving Gr forward. grandfather grandfathered in what sense in the sense they still need a permit they still need right. a permit obviously right. but in terms of ha like not having to remove it and rebuild well how would right. you like, how would you build build it wait a when a storm let's go one, through the chair one, please yeah, well, yeah so i guess time. the i guess the just the three i'm talking about um permitting them for what's been there for however many years and then if it's damaged by a storm or if you know or if it needs to be renovated then it has to be renovated up to the new no i think i think if it comes to us with uh, with an application for a permit it would be to meet the performance standards right now um that is what that is what i believe should should be the route that this commission takes Leaving them the way they are now is not is not doing anything good for the for the for the environment. It, it's not a town bylaw. It's the Wetland Protection, Protection Act. Act. So we don't have jurisdiction to say, oh, let's grandfather them. Mm -hmm. Right, right. They there's not a grandfather. There's not a grandfather right. here at all. Right, but how? But they've been left that way for sixty years. That's right. That's we right. haven't enforced the law, but now we know that we're not enforcing yeah. it. And I don't think that the Conservation Commission can say 
oh, we're not going to do our job. Until, until, you, until something happens to it. That's, that doesn't, for us, make sense at all. I, I think that the, the idea is to, is to have them meet the performance standards. If that, that's going to mean raising them up. And, and coming to us with an application to show how you're going to remove what's there and put one up that's up, up a high, that height. That's what, that's what each one should be considering. Selectman uh, George. And did I notice in, in my readings that some of them have um, supports support. and some of them don't? Right. So those supports probably are in the, into, them. Into, the, into the soil and mud or whatever is down there and are probably won't have to be pulled up. Maybe, maybe not. But to go it, up it, higher, you right, may have to. Right, yeah. they might need to go up higher, but at least those won't have to be pulled out. Um, it's more raising them up and making them up off the marsh. Is that what I'm hearing? I, I think it's going to be case by case. Right. It's right. going to be case yeah. by case, but yeah. I, I would, the but ones that we walked on, um, they are not, I mean, I don't know that you would necessarily attach to those forms. Yeah. You yeah. probably would. Would, would put something more structurally sound in it for a taller thing, right. as opposed okay. to just attaching to small, they might be only about you know six inches or eight inches oh, deep okay. or a foot yep. or something. Okay. That's so not, so not so going to be enough. I, the, so I okay. guess I'm a, so I'm a little bit unclear then. So are, so what is it that this, like do, are, yeah. so the are selectment, you it's a, from us on it's like, a, there's the two separate issues. There's the mm -hmm. Wetlands Protection Act that the, the commission is, is going to handle. Uh, this board, need, for the public property ones, this board needs to say whether it's willing to grant a license to allow it to stay or not. That's this board's particular role. And then they'll have to deal with the Wetlands Protection Act. Right. Correct. Totally yeah. separate. Got Regardless it. Okay. of issuing, right, right. if the board does say, you know, we're willing to issue a license for any, all, et cetera, they still need to comply with the right. orders of the commission. It, okay. It's very so similar to what you do at Long Beach. Got it. Yep. Yep. Got okay. it. Okay. okay. So yep. now, now I understand. I thought we had some flexibility with yep. the, which no. apparently we no. don't. So no. that is pretty black and white. Okay. okay. So Great. my suggestion would be, I mean, honestly, I feel, I mean, I live in that neighborhood. My husband had a grand, my husband's grandmother lived at, well, it was 87. I don't know what it is now. <laughs> it's now the black one, right near yours, I think. <laughs> 67 or something? 60, uh, I'm not sure. Whatever. 60-something. I, I, I can't keep track anymore. But, I mean, I would, you know, knowing the, the history, I mean, we're talking, you know, decades and decades. So I would be, like, totally willing to support the, the three or four, you know, three or four, however it is. Obviously, if they have to, you know, comply with wetlands protection, that, that's the law. We don't have a choice in that. Right. But then I think a separate com con conversation for us is if we were, like, if we want to allow more than that. That's kind of how I look at it. I look at what's been there for decades and then the future, I guess. Okay. Which, you know, yeah. personally, I think maybe going forward, you know, maybe, so what's, that, maybe what's, what's yep. there is the end of it. Yep. Right. What's our next step, Mitch? Here? So it would be helpful this evening. Uh, it would be helpful this evening to have a general consensus from the board on whether there's a willingness to license what's there. I think that's that's really a first step. Is okay. there a willingness to, to let subject to the requirements from Conservation Commission? Ruth and uh, Denise? Well, it's not a vote, of course. Yeah. Uh, well, I think if they're brought up to standards that will protect the salt marsh, <coughs> we should let them continue with them mm -hmm. as long as they're protecting the salt marsh and doing everything that the Wetlands Protection Act says they need to do. I think that's fine. But one of the things you've got to think about is that these are private across public Lit land. land. Mm -hmm. That's and and or maybe they're not private anymore. <laughs> they become something public. that people can go to until you get to their property line and then turn around and come back. In other words, you could walk across the marsh or go into the middle of the marsh. I mean, it's not mm -hmm. a bad picture to be taken and that kind yep. of stuff. Sure. Those are kinds of things that okay. yeah, also have to be considered. Because this is a this and then thinking on the rights away committee, you know, the rights to get to go across these things oh, yeah. right. might, no, no, yeah. might be important. something yep. might Very be much. something that could be we they you may talk with those homeowners about okay. sure. But I mean, there are also we also have to respect the hist in my opinion the history of town and there are lots of parts of town that people have used and you know and mm -hmm. walkways and you know rocks that people climb up and you know things that were weren't we're public and you know and I I think that's part of the history of what makes yeah, this absolutely. town unique you yep. know and the fact that people families had access to the beach for you know 60 to 70 years I think you know obviously that needs to be respected as well okay yes 
May, oh. oh, I'm sorry. Uh, why don't we go with Stuckman and Donnelly first? Yeah, so I um, actually like Fran's idea. Um, I think that having separate boardwalks is not good for the salt marsh, and my preference would be to do something where communal, communal, and and that also would mean that the public could access it. Um, it if this is truly a paper road that is a town road, um, does that go over the salt marsh, Fran? Or so it, it's a no. sea view is private. Sea view is private. Oh, okay, and that's part uh, on the layout that. Without going through the assessor and having a verifier GIS, it's part of Sea View. But so. isn't Sea View where the Cape Hedge Beach? Yes. That, that's what this it, is. It is, but it's, it's all part of the same. There's nothing that differentiates it right now. Her arrows are right to now. the parking lot. Her arrows are right before you, the parking lot. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Got it. So it's, before, it's between it wouldn't two of the homes that have boardwalks. So okay. I was just trying to think of giving mm -hmm. a common boardwalk because it would just streamline and help. Think right. It is. Right. In, in many ways. I just oh, wanted to make one I don't think it is, actually. Whatever we decide to do, um, as it stated in the July 24th letter from David, our chair, is that this has to be reviewed by the coastal zone management. So there are many steps involved. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. isn't completely in no, our hands either. Yeah. Right. There are understood. certain guides, certain things that we need to um, abide by mm -hmm. and uphold. And so just to let you know that there are several steps it's yep. not a total slam dunk yep um it's it's a little complicated yep i mean just my point of view is that the world has changed we're dealing with climate change the the salt marsh plays a really important role in protecting these properties the town um, the roads and i just think it's a different time mm -hmm. and i I'm really hesitating. I, okay. That's just my opinion. Yep. Anyone else um, from the board before? Yes. I would just basically, it's just but been it, said. I, um, I Laura Kozacek on the Conservation Commission, 293 Granite Street. Um, I would just uh, bolster what Denise has just said um, and what Fran has said. We do need to be thinking about this. Uh, from a science-based perspective as yep. well. We have, to, we have to make our decision from that place. Okay. Yes, we are upholding the Wetland Protection Act, but we are also looking at this um, from an information point of view, and we do a great deal of work individually and collectively toward that for the town of Rockport. I would also say that what we want to do, in addition to all of our thinking in town, we want to respect the past, but we also want to have something for tomorrow. And that goes with the DPW building, too. And I would just, um, if Pat is still here, she has um, architectural skills and has uh, some designs that are very forward thinking and uh, climate change uh, related as far as energy goes. Um, we need to think about the same thing here. We can't necessarily make all of our decisions about the uh, historic um, values that we do appreciate. We are talking about a very dynamic and um, rare habitat. We haven't been talking about habitat too much. We talked about vegetation. That's something we can all understand. Fran did mention, I think, the nursery habitat area for 95% of the fin fish. I think it's in the letter. Mm -hmm. Perhaps yeah, sure it's all there. Um, but every governmental agency is examining the uh, limited amount of salt marsh that we have left mm -hmm. in the country, and certainly in Massachusetts, mm -hmm. even with the protections since 1978, um, even in the 80s, salt marsh is on the decrease. Every government agency, Department of Fish and Wildlife, all of the different ones, Coastal Zone Management, they're all going to be looking very, very carefully at this area. So we don't know how much is going to be outside of our okay. jurisdiction Good. beyond. Well, thank okay. you very much. Uh, let's, uh, you've already spoken. Toby. Uh, Toby, quickly, please. Toby, Toby Arsenian, 95 Granite Street. Earlier it was said that all of the, the uh, boardwalks were on town property. 
Uh, later, two people present said that the boardwalks were on their property. I don't know. Uh, Mitch Vieira spoke of, of two separate issues. Actually, there are three. Uh, whether they're on private property or on town property, if they're seaward of mean high water, they require Chapter 91 licenses. Do you, the board, know whether uh, any we'll of We'll look this into that. We'll definitely look into that. Uh, because if they're on yes, town I property, know, know if they're on town property, whether or not the town or private people put them there, you're responsible. It's yes. that way for the Conservation Commission's regulations. If I dump a truckload of rubbish yes, in your totally. salt we get it. We pond, get it. Yep. You, you know, yep. I'm not responsible. We, we understand. We understand. Likewise, thank the you. town. Yes, thank you. We, all that will be vetted. So, uh, let's wrap this up because we're moving on. But. And they're obviously so, not decisions are going to be made. We're going to be moving on. Yep. Uh, Please. Just one more comment. Um, I'm a, I'm, I understand about history and the historical piece, and I understand about the scientific piece. What I, what I want to make sure that the Conservation Commission knows and also that the board knows, because I think the board oversees the Conservation Commission because they appoint them, is that um, the most precious thing to me, as far as a habitat, is my property. It's, it's as precious as the salt marsh to me. So uh, I, I, I want to make sure that people understand I do care about it. Sure. Uh, but we're the human beings. We live on this planet. And we get a say of how it's done. And, and to decide something scientifically, if that's the only way you're going to think of it, which I hope that's not the way it's thought of, that could eliminate us. So uh, let's, let's not be too extreme. And, and if all the government agencies are looking at that, that's terrific too. But we're the citizens. The government works for us. We get to tell them how to proceed. And, and I hope the people in the government understand that. Right. right. And we have regulations that we need to obviously uh, adhere to laws and so forth. So all that comes together. Thank you, everyone. We'll, be, we'll continue to work on this. Thank you for coming. Thank you. And uh, we'll get this done. OK, moving along, uh, the DPW building. How about from the back? Kathleen, she's here. Oh, Kathleen is here. Kathleen is Kathleen, here. Kathleen, come on in. Come on up, please. Is there a motion? I have a motion. Um, I'm, I move to nominate Kathleen Scrabbit. Scrabbit to the Council on Aging for a term to expire on June 30th, 2022. Thank you, Kathleen, for coming. I have uh, CDs. Would you like? I think they get mailed. We got a copy. Oh, we, we, we did. Got oh, yeah. We got yeah, your no, copy. No. Yeah. Would you, just a very briefly, okay. uh, can you uh, discuss for a moment a little bit about why you want to be on the Council of Aging oh, and uh, what makes you a, a good uh, person to be on it? Um, when reading the mission of the Sorry. when reading the mission of the uh, Council on Aging, um, it seemed that appointment to the board might offer me the opportunity to blend my uh, professional background and my long long term uh, commitment to service. Okay. Um, the the mission really focuses on a development of programs, implementation of programs, and a lot of my career has been involved in doing needs assessments and planning, um, planning programs and um, outcome assessment. So it seemed like it would be a good fit. Good fit? Oh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have you, like an embarrassment of riches tonight. Forward. Thank you very much. Is there You're any welcome. Uh, We're from well, I want to know where did you guys head yeah, today? How was the trip. Yeah. Oh, it was an awesome. Trip. Where, where where was we it? We were in New Hampshire, in Troy, New Hampshire. Um, we had a fabulous lunch at the inn at East Hill Farm, and then saw seven covered bridges. Oh, wow. cool! Oh, nice. oh, nice. Really nice. terrific trip. Oh, oh, how many people call. went? Forty-three. Wow. Forty-three. Crazy. Yeah. Oh, Diane. Crazy. Diane. Crazy. Yeah. Diane slipped came. in too. Hi, Diane. Yeah. 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 Wow. And Nancy's our, here. That's so cool. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it was a great Kath trip. Kathleen's been coming to the meetings. I've been to two, and she's been at those. Yep. Listening and, and learning, and and I also went uh, two weeks ago to a board training session held oh, in wow. Topsfield. Great. So that was, Good. That was yep. really great. Jumped right helpful. in. 
Well, it sounds I, like you're I well feel qualified. like we are so yep. rich in our council on yep. aging oh, absolutely. that it's amazing. Absolutely. Yep. So thank you so much for yep. stepping thank forward. Great. So my pleasure. Thank uh, you. Do you want a motion? Please. Oh, I think it's. Oh, it's already been made. It's the second. Oh, did we make it? Yeah, I made it. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Jose. Great. Thank you so much for stepping forward. Motion passes 4 0. Thanks, Diane. Thank okay, you. our action list is the DPW Building Committee. Um, how are we going to put this Mitch's together? Right. Mr. Chairman, uh, thank yes, you. Yes, please. So the, the uh, board had previously done some uh, version of this in 2016. Um, time has, has changed a bit, and that it isn't really an appropriate setup anymore. Um, and it was somewhat haphazard at that point. Uh, so I, I have a, <coughs> a few rec I have a recommendation for you on a potential structure and some options. There's a lot of discussion on who may fill these seats. There's been a lot of discussion on it, and um, it's wonderful the, that the there the is discussion about it. That's there's, it there's been quite a bit of feedback on it, and, and I, I landed on this a few moments before the meeting because there's been continuous feedback on, on these last couple of seats. But you feel like you're close, right? I, I'm, I'm hoping so. Um, certainly. Uh, DPW commissioner, a commissioner that they would select, mm -hmm. a selectman that the board would select. Um, in, in this case, I would recommend to you that it would be the vice chair and the DPW liaison, <laughs> Ruth George. You think she's qualified? I think she's more than qualified for it. And uh, I'm just kidding. Mike, Mike, don't put that on the paper. <laughs> <laughs> He's writing quickly. Uh, two citizen seats. One of them is already filled. Monica Lawton holds one of the citizen seats. Good. And this fifth one has been this this difficult to pin pin down one, but um, I'm, I'm thinking that uh, I would recommend to you that it would be filled by someone who has a background as either an architect uh, or a construction project manager. I think that's probably a helpful that the one that I had the background. Oh. You you did. Ruth had a few. Um, Denise just presented when we walked you're in. Talking five people. Five yeah. people. Five. I think five is probably very appropriate for this. The committee needs to be um, dynamic. I think more than that, um, maybe a bit much for this. Okay. It needs the ability to meet during the day. Um, and it'll be a pretty regular, some regular meetings. Just um, so people know, meet during the day because they'll have to be dealing with it, the It needs to be with the contractors and, and interacting and with what's happening on the right. site. So it's not really a timing of the volunteers. It's a timing of the business that they have Correct. to do. Correct. Right. Correct. Well, it needs can't, can't those guys come? Oh, those, <laughs> can't they come at night? Well, uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> we, we want to contain or costs. Or we want to contain yeah. costs. Yeah. So. Uh, I'm, I'm serious. I think we're going to take a little bit of heat. If we can't, I'm, I'm sorry, if we can't have these at well, night. I, think it's, I, I actually think it might work for the people who are volunteering to do it during the day. True. So I, I think when you look at, you know, there, there may be times other, that I it would. I know, but you guys, they're, they're, like, if I wanted to be on this committee, I'm sorry, Mitch, but, but if I wanted to be on this committee, I couldn't because I have to work till 5 o'clock at, at night. Mm -hmm. but you so can't, can't we have these at, at night? Why? You can get anything you want. It's just a matter of what you want to pay. Right. Well, that, but I think the I think that the people who he has making up, I think actually, with all the other commitments they have, the days might work better. And that's something I, that I the committee agree. itself can, can, can sort out. Years, the meetings but, have oh, to be when they I, like. How I, many I, night meetings can Ruth go to? To I mean, be honest, like, let me tell you, I go to a lot. <laughs> you know, but she's like I, she's kind of maxed out. I know, but <laughs> I'm thinking of the the, the, the citizens and that they're, they're going to join the committee and no, other I people that might but, have some conflicts because they're working. Here's one citizen right, right. there. Yes. And, I think you can perhaps uh, mix it up a little yeah. bit, but more importantly, I think the committee is not necessarily always going to be dealing directly with the contractors. Uh, there will certainly be site visits and there will certainly be opportunities when there might be some exchange with contractors, but you'll have an owner's project manager who will be representing uh, or acting on behalf of the town and I would think the owner's project manager would have some flexibility for evening meetings versus daytime meetings. And I just yeah. remember at pr previous meetings or, or committees that have been hired uh, or, or, or formed that there was a, uh, and I think it was justified, uh, no one could come to them, uh, no one could meet because it was during the day. Yeah. So. I think it depends on the situation. So I think, I, I, I think tonight's, tonight's purpose is to set the committee. Yeah. yeah let's set the committee. Tonight is to yeah. set the, yeah. right. set the yeah. committee. Yeah. Yeah. Let's not get too deep into that yeah. beyond that. Yeah. yeah. So I, I would also I would also say that um, the, the expectation would be that my, myself and the uh, DPW director will be ex officio members and we'll will attend that as the, the staff assigned to the to the committee. Um, 
Has there been any thought about having a um, DPW worker, just a regular So we, we, we went through a few different items, and I think the most appropriate route for that would be to funnel the information through the, through the director to, to the committee, and the committee can have the opportunity to speak with folks as they go along Perfect. if there needs to be some discussion Perfect. that happens with it. Um, but I think it, it, it sits best with um, the commissioner being, uh, being the DPW representative. Good. As long as it... Th there's always the opportunity for the feedback, and, yeah. and there'll certainly be meetings. They will, I, I would expect, pretty regularly. You'll, you'll see the foreman at these meetings anyway. Uh, as they go through, especially as the, the detail phases start to come out, they'll, they'll be present. I would expect that they're going to show up. Great. So at our next meeting, would we hope to appoint a committee? Uh, hopefully. Uh, if the board is comfortable okay and with, like, moving forward on if the board is good with this particular layout, um, then that would allow Are the, we the board to start to fill. For I, I haven't yet because I, I haven't. Yeah. I, need, I, need a, I need a setup I mean, first. How, how long are we going to? I think we'd probably put good. it out generally. I wouldn't hold it open too yeah. long. I think, I think we, we want to be able to Keep progress. It. People have expressed uh, some interest. Is, uh, we got like two weeks. Before I'd meeting. probably put it out for a week. I'd probably put it out for about a week. I'd Does put it on Facebook. For, for citizens to... I think if folks are interested, they know something is coming. I think so with how Facebook... Are we advertise it? I, I would I'm, put... I'm, it. Just, I'm thinking of the, you know... No sure. One's ever, you know, I'm, yeah. and, and, and nothing will be perfect on this. I expect yep. to, yeah. to hear the oh, feedback yeah. on that. But um, the route that we found the most successful is social media. Yeah. So we will put that on Facebook. Perfect. It'll go out that way. Folks can apply to the office. And I, I think a week would probably cover it because people are already expressing interest and are saying, hey, it sounds interesting. Um, and that, will, that would reach the most. We'll certainly put it on the website and on the bulletin board at Town Hall. Enough, I'm, 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 again, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He already has this. people who are interested. So this, yeah, if, the, if, if I'm it were... I'm just worried that... I, I'm sorry to be a pain in the neck, but I'm, I'm just worried that people are going to say, I haven't had enough time. People haven't... I didn't know about this. I would have joined. But yeah. one week... Maybe yeah. two weeks, I think, would be better. A week on Facebook is like a month. I think we need to just get But not everyone's on Facebook. Moving. Not everyone's on Facebook. So we put it on the website and we put it on the town bulletin board. I, I don't know everyone. that we okay. put a Gloucester right. Times right. ad I'm necessarily for this. Yeah. <laughs> no, that, that's all right. I, I, I'm just, I, I don't think that's enough time. I don't, I really don't. Well, it's up to, if the board yeah. wants more, I, the board needs to just tell well, me that it I wants more. I just personally want it move. I want it moving. There's not a huge, I don't think there's an unbelievable huge rush, is there? I think the, so. the, it, it is yeah. very time sensitive. Yeah. Why is it, it so time sensitive? Because I'm talking we, about a week. I'm not I think I months. think as we start to look at things, the sooner we can get this committee together, the yeah. sooner yeah. we can start to uh, make progress on an owner's project manager RFP. All of these things hinge on getting this committee in mm -hmm. place, okay. and I worry that we're going to already be entering the holiday season, and that's going to naturally slow this process down. So at this point, a week, in my mind, fills that need. Uh, we're going to be bumping up against Veterans Day. Then we're going to hit Thanksgiving pretty you quickly. Can maybe and do ten days so we can um, get it done for our next meeting. Yeah. I just think the goal yeah. would be to do it. Ten days would be meeting. okay. Yeah. Okay. Does and that, and I think so if, if the board's the good with ten, yeah. that's fine. If Mitch, and, does that make and, sense? Like that way we could do it at sure. our next meeting. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's the goal, right? Yeah. We basically yeah. have between now and the next yeah. meeting. Yeah. And I think too, if we, if you contact Mike, who just left from the Gloucester Daily Times. Yeah, I expect that he'll run a story. He'll put a story in, and we can say that we're looking for people to fill the other position mm -hmm. and and get it out that way in the paper right? and social media that would be another way of getting it out so mm -hmm. so um, my recommendation again is one DPW commissioner one board of selectmen member two citizens and one uh, one individual with architect uh, or construction project management experience and one at large kind of right no that's five no that that would be the five five okay yep. Sounds good. So if if there's a if the board uh, wishes to so so move, yeah. that would be yep. helpful. So moved. And then and then somebody <laughs> yeah, process the I'll regular motion. That. Yep. Second. Yep. All those in favor? No. Aye. Yep. <laughs> I don't think we need. I I I'm okay with that. Is everyone else? You sure? Yeah. I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm just. I just. I just worry. I just worry about this being. Well, forget it. I've already said it enough. So. But I can be it. You, yeah, I would love you to be it. Yes. Are, is this committee going to review any new technology? I'm sure, yes. 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 Yep. 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 I mean, the building isn't already finalized. No, not no. even close. No. No. Nope. No. Okay. Anything else, Mitch? No, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay. So we Thank don't you. have a meeting next week. No. Great. Any um, business or announcements?
Is there a motion to oh, adjourn? I, I have one oh, announcement sure. go ahead. that you're going to grow a beard. I am. And that Mitch is going to grow a beard. Yeah. <laughs> we're growing. We're grow They're growing beards for kids with is it kids cops uh, something cops yeah. with kids with cancer, and the female police officers or I'm any of the board of selectmen. I'm just going to make blue a nails. nice. Yeah, I'm just going to make a nice. So make I have blue donation. nails. <laughs> Not going to have blue nails. <laughs> <laughs> Ruth, you can have blue nails uh, for us. Yeah. So I'm going to look like Santa Claus. <laughs> oh, speaking of, we need to. Uh, we were going to talk about. Um, oh yes, uh, we, we haven't heard back yet on the availability. Okay. Okay. Uh, but we do need to set the board's holiday party. Yeah. So okay. we're just waiting to hear back on the community house availability. Okay. Okay. Perfect. And then that would fall. Thank okay. You. Is there okay. a motion to adjourn? So moved. Seconded. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you.